welcome you back to the Grand Victoria Casino. We are in Elgin, Illinois, not far from Chicago, about a 40-minute drive, and we come now to our main event, battle for the USBA Junior Lightweight Championship, Lamont Pearson and Carlos Navarro. And, Rich, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but this Junior Lightweight Division offering a lot of very attractive fights, and, of course, our two main event fighters trying to get just a little piece of all of that. Well, yeah, and, you know, at the very top, it's very difficult because you've got so much unbelievable talent at the very top with a lot of the undefeated uh, uh, champions. And then you have these two guys, for example, Joel Casamayor, Stevie Forbes, and uh, that leaves out a couple of the champions, though, Asalina Fritas, who, who, of course, has won all of his fights by knockout, who Casamayor is supposed to fight if Fritas can get his weight problems under control. And then, of course, Floyd Mayweather, who I'm sure the vast majority of people will say is still number one in the 130-pound uh, division. So it's a, you know, it's a heck of a division. Yeah, it's really a tough division. And as a matter of fact, the good thing about it, because it is so tough, should be some big money fights. And these guys tonight, as we said, now one of these guys has been assured the number one ranking in the IBF. So there really is something to fight for for these guys. Well, and I think they have a chance, you know, obviously that makes it very important because they leapfrog a lot of people right into a title condemning position. So for Carlos Navarro and Lamont Pearson, you have two guys on the cusp who have a chance of being able to knock down the door, have a chance to fight for the title. Lamont Pearson is ready to become a player in the talented 130-pound division. Now in his third year as a pro, Pearson thinks he can crash tonight through an open door of opportunity, as an amateur he did by winning the Golden Gloves Championship. And finally, at the age of 30, has that same feeling again. When I first turned professional, I wasn't thinking world champion. I was taking one fight at a time, and I knew at my age, I had to work pretty quickly and, and to move up in the ranks. So I took it uh, one fight at a time, and every fight has been a test to get to this level. By stepping up in class and taking on the veteran Harold Warren, Pearson served notice he'd arrive with body punches and finishing blows to the head. Warren was KO'd, and Pearson could say, hey, look at me. I'm the only junior lightweight to uh, knock Harold Warren out, even though, you know, he was up in age also, but he came to fight. 12 rounds. My confidence is sore. There is no wanting for confidence on the face or in the mind of Pearson's opponent tonight, Carlos Navarro, who bounced back from a shocking junior featherweight 1999 loss to Carlos Contreras to a heavier weight against Javier Lucas, and he looked good. You know, for a while I was thinking I was going to be 122 pounder for a while, and after that night I knew I wasn't going to fight there anymore, so I learned that yeah, you know what? I'm growing. I'm not at that weight anymore. I have to move up and, you know, go from there. He's gone from there four times since and won them all, including his last bout, a spectacular KO of Ubaldo Hernandez in the seventh round. And now at 130, perhaps Navarro is ready to fulfill the enormous potential he showed as an amateur and put his name alongside the glittering names in the division. Of course I see my new thirds. Uh, that's why I train so hard for this fight. You know, this is a stepping stone for me. And I've been waiting around so long so that my name could be heard out there. And this is my, my chance and time to prove everyone, you know, that I'm, I'm up there and I'm a true champion. And so what you have here in this situation, Barry, is as you heard Lamont Pearson say, he wasn't expecting any world championships when he began his pro career. And he meets tonight Navarro, a guy whom everyone expected world championships when he started his pro career after a great amateur career. Tonight, their two roads, very different, intersect in what has to be a crossroads fight. And one of them, of course, is very likely to get that world championship. The guy who didn't expect it or the guy who did expect it. Carlos Navarro and Lamont Pearson will fight tonight for the right to fight for a bigger championship in a division where it seems that the top four guys don't want any part of each other. We're coming back. Welcome back to Elgin, Illinois. We're looking at the Fox River. It's supposed to be summer, but not quite yet. We come now inside the Grand Victoria Casino to our main event. As we said, it's a battle for the USBA Junior Lightweight Championship, Lamont Pearson and Carlos Navarro. And, uh, Rich, we've talked about what might be for these two fighters once the fight is over. Let's talk a little bit about what might happen in this fight. Well, I think it should be a very interesting strategic fight. All my reports that I've gotten on Lamont Pearson have been very good. The fact that he's a pretty slick guy in there, and he looked very 
very good in knocking out Harold Warren in that fight just a few months ago. We know that Carlos Navarro has a lot to offer. So I think we're going to see a stylistic battle in there between these two. I think it's going to take a little time for them to size each other up and see what each man has got. It's going to be an interesting chess match, I think. All right, so now we know what Rich Murata thinks. Let's find out what the champ thinks. Sean O'Grady, how do you see this fight? You know, Barry, I think Rich Murata is right on. You know, Lamont Pearson is a real classy fighter. He fights with a stand-up style. He boxes well. But Carlos Navarro is one of those fighters that is in your face. He's going to be setting the tempo, setting the agenda. This fight for the USBA Championship, there's a lot riding on this match. For that reason, I think Carlos Navarro really is going to pull ahead in a very, very close fight. You'll see a lot of strategy. You'll see a lot of style. You'll see a lot of aggression. You'll see a lot of pain, a lot of drama. Back to you. making his way toward the ring now and uh, Pearson really seems like a confident fighter as you said he's a guy who uh, maybe has not gotten the respect that he's due seems like he might get it tonight well the confidence you're right about because he's been talking about the fact that the confidence for him really grew as far as that Harold Warren fight was concerned he could get into the ring and fight a guy who'd been around who'd been a contender a perennial contender hold his own with him and not, not only hold his own but end up dominating the fight and knocking him out. So I think you're right about the confidence that he brings in. And he also brings the confidence born from an undefeated record. Only one draw to mar that record here uh, so far. So he's got a lot going for him. Uh, you know, he's 30 years of age here, and I think he realizes that, you know, time is not on his side so that he's got to, you know, make things happen quickly. Yeah, and a fighter like that where he knows the clock is ticking can oftentimes be a hungry fighter, and he's definitely going to have to be that against Carlos Navarro. Navarro is a guy who really has bounced back from the one loss that he's had in his career. That was the Carlos Contreras fighting at 122 pounds, too light for him. He just could not make that weight. So he's had a number of obstacles uh, during his career, actually, Barry, if you go through it. He had what he figured were promotional difficulties at the beginning of his career. He did not get off to the kind of start that everybody had hoped for in terms of being a rising star. And so much was expected of Carlos Navarro from the very beginning. You know, that I think a lot of pressure is on this kid. Still at this point, Carlos, the pressure up a lot of very high expectations. There you see his record. You can't argue with that record. 23-1 and one, and a lot of knockouts along the way. He held a minor world championship to throw on the mix, but he wants to get the real deal. And if he can get a victory here tonight, he might have a chance at one. Yeah, and I think this is the type of fight that does give you that kind of respect because these two guys are both qualified. They both deserve to be in there against a good guy, and tonight, each one is in there against a good guy. That's what makes this an interesting fight. Of course, what's down the road makes it that much more interesting. Let's take a look at the numbers, see how these two do match up. And, uh, Rich, you mentioned it earlier, but uh, Pearson at 30 years of age, the clock is ticking. He is six years the senior of Navarro, despite the fact that he's only had 15 fights. He's undefeated Navarro with just the one loss, as you said, to Carlos Contreras. And beyond that, it's a pick em fight. Three-inch reach advantage for Navarro. Maybe a bit of a uh, competition edge to Navarro, but this one should be a very, very good fight. Right now, let's meet him as we take him to the center of the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you, and we welcome you to the Grand Victoria Casino in Elgin, Illinois. It's time for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by America Presents Matchmaker Thomas Brown, along with Eight Count Productions. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the USBA, along with the Illinois Department of Professional Regulation, the director, Leonard A. Sherman, chief boxing coordinator, Sean Curtin, the chairman is Phil C. Acting Executive Manager Joel Camposano, Executive 2 Joseph P. Birdie, and Administrative Assistant Ronald Pusillo. Introducing to you our three judges at ringside Mike Gliena, Jerome Jacobko, and Dave Hess, and our referee in charge of the bout, Pete Podgorski. Right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the USBA Junior Lightweight Championship as well as the IBF number one world ranking. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Grand Victoria in Elgin, Illinois, it's fight time on Fox Sports Net and the main... Fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with blue trim, hailing from Capitol Heights, Maryland, he weighed in at an even 130 pounds. Undefeated in his campaign ring, his record 
stands at 15 wins, no losses, one draw, with eight wins coming by way of knockout, introducing Lamont Dave Pearson. the ring, ready to fight on my right out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with gold trim, fighting out of the south central side of Los Angeles, California. His weight the same as his opponent, right at the limit of 130 pounds. His fine record stands at 23 wins, only one loss, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing El Surdo de Oro, Carlos Navarro. Once again, Pete Podgorski, our referee in charge, now to give instructions. Men, over less, first and foremost, protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves, come out banging at the belt. So we're just about set to go. You take a look at Lamont Pearson. And as we said, Pearson really appears to be the confident fighter, and he'll need to be. The fighting mailman. There he is. He actually is a U.S. postal worker, and he does deliver mail. No, Tony Thornton. That's right. From a recent vintage, was another fighting postman. Out of Philadelphia, had a couple of shots at championships. Pearson to try, try to go in one better. Carlos Navarro, you saw those shoes of his, uh, uh, which are festooned with... Uh, of kids and his fiance. Borrowed the page out of the Sugar Ray Leonard scrapbook. Navarro is trying tonight to really gather some of the prestige that's already going to his younger brother, Jose Navarro, who's an Olympian and who has started off very fast in the professional ranks, is undefeated. And uh, he is uh, managed by Oscar De La Hoya, who's the brother of Carlos. Carlos started with such bright uh, expectations himself, but some would uh, say that he's been a disappointment as a pro, or at least he has not advanced as far as many people thought he would. Once again, Pearson has to deal with the fact that Navarro being left-handed, good idea to keep an eye on his feet. There'll probably be a lot of uh, stepping on each other's toes. of a little bit the busier here in round one. But as I look at Pearson, he really looks to me to be just kind of checking out what Navarro's got. Here you saw him faint with the right hand. He's just trying to see how Navarro reacts to various moves, how he reacts when he pulls back. Moving right hand from Navarro. No real damage thus far. study hall for these for two fighters. That uppercut missed by Pearson. Navarro nicknamed El Zerdo de Oro, meaning uh, the golden lefty, golden left-hander. attack here basically buried by I think by uh, Navarro in round one and just kind of looking things over and checking things out as Pearson here in round one. And if there's anything to uh, judge from these two it looks as though Pearson trying to come up the middle Navarro trying to hook a little bit more but again uh, as you said it's, it's been classroom stuff. First round, uh, let's size these two up, Rich. All right, we go back to the corner here with Lamont Bay Pearson, who's a guy who's a pretty slick in there and likes to go to the body. He did on a couple of occasions there in round one, but he's only got 16 fights, and he is uh, 30 years old, so he's got to make things happen quick for us. 
himself. Costa Ray is uh, Carlos Navarro. Still quite young at 26. Smart when he's aggressive. He can uh, be entertaining to watch. Has shown pretty good power. Not great power, but pretty good. Had that great amateur career, but as a pro, not quite as far as people thought he would get. Right now, let's go to the champ, Sean O'Grady, who's with another champ, Stevie Forbes. Sean? The IBF champion of the world, Stephen Forbes. What are you watching here? I'm watching a chess match between two guys uh, got very good skills. These may be one of your opponents in the future. Yes, the winner will be number one contender, so uh, I'm looking forward to whoever wins. You know, you don't look scared over here. Are you scared? No, nah, I'm never scared. <laughs> nah, no way. No fear in you, I know. Uh, now, you've got, a, you've got a fight, an interim fight, coming up uh, with the number one contender currently, John Brown, sometime this summer. But the, one of these two you'll face later on in this year, right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, I got a fight with John Brown, so Brown, get ready. We do it again. All right, Brown, Brown Town. Hey, uh, what about this fight here? What are you seeing? Um, I see it look like Navarro's controlling the fight, but Pearson's having, um, you know, spurts. Yeah, any prediction? Uh, Navarro should win, but you never know. Yeah, I know. They're both, uh, this, should, this should be a, it's a hard fight to handicap. It should be a good fight. Back over to you guys. All right, thanks much. Round number two just underway, and uh, Forbes has still got a fight, as you mentioned, Brown. That's almost a continuation of their first fight, Barry, which uh, was very, very close at the time it was stopped. And, uh, uh, Brown had the problem with the ear. And I think Forbes has still got some proving to do insofar as his, his uh, championship timber is concerned. In fact, as I recall, was Brown not ahead in that fight when they stopped it? Yes, he was, in fact. He had, I believe, on two of the three scorecards. Right. It was a very close fight and a very good fight, and they'll do it again. Right. And then after that, the, the winner of this one moves into the number one slot, which is currently held down by Brown. Of course, Forbes was supposed to fight uh, Justin Juco, but because of the, an injury, had to pull out, and that's when uh, uh, Zepeda surprisingly stepped in and uh, KO'd the Juco. That's right. A little bit of a uh, welt on the left cheek of uh, Navarro right now. Nothing that's uh, real serious at all, but it, it's there. Well, Navarro ducked down, and he ducked right into that punch of Pierce. Pearson saw where he was going, and he launched a right hand low, and it connected with the face of Navarro. And Pearson's having a pretty good second round. Sean O'Grady has uh, joined us here at the table. So far, setting up is a pretty good fight. Very good fight. Yeah, and you know, it's really daunting when you face a left-hander. They come at you backwards. Their, their styles are different. You get hit with punches from different angles. But Pearson doing a fine job this uh, in this fight. He's uh, doing exactly what he should be doing against left-handers. Look at that. A pivot and a nice left hook. Now, southpaws are vulnerable to real wide left hooks and real straight right hand. That well underneath the left eye of Navarro. Navarro getting hit a bit too much early in this fight. Now we're seeing uh, Pearson really, Sean, uh, opening up and getting uh, getting into the fight. I think he studied all he wants to study. He's seen enough. He feels that he can uh, now begin really unlaunching, or rather launching an arsenal. Now he's, he's probably thinking to himself, what's going on with Navarro? Why isn't he mauling me like Carlos normally does? Maybe I should go in and try something, see if this works. Maybe I can take him out. Maybe I've caught him cold. You know, Navarro may, Navarro's also a 12-round fighter. He usually doesn't get started until after the third round. I think Pearson's really controlling the second round, and actually, he's busting Navarro up a little bit for early in this fight. Watch Navarro's head. He's going to bring it down here, and then the right hand there by uh, Lamont Pearson will come in. He saw right where he was going with it, and he launched it, and it landed cleanly. Nice job by Pearson. Nice round by Pearson. This is round three, scheduled for 12. Now let's see if Pearson really attempts to keep the pressure on here, Barry. He started to have something going in that last round. You know that? I think that well started to look a little angry underneath the uh, left eye of Navarro near the end of the round. Yeah, it's, it's early in the fight to start messing with that stuff. You know, Pearson shows pretty good quickness, too. He's got very good feet, pretty quick hands. Even fight thus far. Carlos Navarro, 95 champion of the United States in the amateur ranks at 119. The year before, he won it at 112. Fought Floyd Mayweather three times. Beat Floyd Mayweather in the amateurs. Let's go 
into the corner of uh, Carlos Navarro. That's where the champ is. Sean, what he got? Thanks, guys. Frank Rivera, the chief trainer over here. What's happening? Carlos getting hit a lot. Well, he's staying in front of the kid too much. He's supposed to be light and moving to his right. And he's, uh, he's flat footed. He's staying in front. We don't want, that's not the game plan. Is he getting caught cold in this fight? No, no. He's just, he's, he's, for some reason, he feels a little sluggish. And, you know, we got to work through it, but he knows that he's supposed to be circling right, moving moving over, boxing this kid. This kid's, uh, he knows what to do, he's just not doing it. You think he could be a little bit nervous, being that this fight is for all the marble, and the champion sitting here at ringside? No, it has no, no effect at all. I think it's just, uh, you know, the kid's style and, and coming out here, you know, he just feels a little heavy on his feet. Well, he's really focused, I know, but what do you do to really get him where he's really compact and doing what you want him to do? You know, I, in between the rounds, I got to just keep stressing the fact that staying in front of this guy is not is not our game. You know, and, and what does he say to you? He, 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 he understands. He's just forcing himself to move a little bit. He feels a little sluggish. He knows what to do. He may be a little bit tight. You might want to relax him a little bit. Back, back over to you guys, Barry. All right, thanks very much, Richard. My observation is that Navarro is looking at Pearson like, as if to say, I didn't realize you were this quick. Yeah, but, but you know, I think the I think the sluggish turn that his trainer used over there is, is correct. That's the that's the look. That's the impression I get. Uh, sluggish is very good. I mean, uh, is a very good term to describe what's happening here with Navarro. And Pearson is showing no fear now. He's not showing uh, Navarro much respect. I don't think. And uh, it's working for him. He's, uh, he's picking up with confidence with each round. Well, he's out quicking Car uh, Carlos. There's no question about that. You can look at right there is a perfect example. A little right uppercut inside. Yep. Excellent round, I believe, for Pearson. Pearson rocked Navarro early in the last round. First with a right and then follow up left. And he saw his legs. He had to give ground there. Then later on in the round, when Navarro's arms are extended, he comes right underneath him with the right uppercut. Good little technical move there by uh, Pearson that caught Navarro by surprise. I tell you, I'm surprised. Pearson is good. Lamont Pearson really picking his shots. He is he has elevated his performance. And he needs to here. I mean, this is a USBA championship. I got a lot when I won the USBA championship, I got so much uh, respect from that title. It is such an important belt to have. I know both of these fighters understand that. Smart move there by Pearson stepping outside the right foot of Navarro and cranking the hook. Well, he does it sometimes, and he squares up to the left-hander. Perhaps he feels that he can get the right hand home. It's a little closer that way. You know, I mentioned to Frank Rivera, Carlos looks tight tonight. He looks like he's trying to knock him out with every punch. And he said he agreed with me, so he tried to tell him three rounds to relax, to play, have fun out there a little bit. And now Navarro is loosening up a little bit. And appearing more fluid in this round, less sluggish. He's got to do it. Just let the punches land. And showing some movement. Yes, that's what they told him between rounds. You see a certain, certainly a different complexion as a fighter from him this round as the last. Took a step to the left and cranked a straight right. Sean, you were talking about that. Straight right is an effective punch. Very effective. Against a left-handed fighter, they run into it every time. It's a straight shot. It's a hook blocked by Pearson. Pearson really has his skills on tonight. He is sharp. Well, you know what really impresses me, uh, both Sean and Rich, is that he's come in here with an idea of what you have to do with a left-hander. And you just don't see that very often. You do not. He came in with a fight plan, and he knows what he's doing in that ring. That is what's impressive. There is a system to this madness. It's not just go out there and wail on your opponent, cut a barrel through him. The strategy of boxing is so important. He has forced the borrow into adjusting. So Carlos is trying to make the adjustment, the proper adjustment, which is uh, to utilize some movement, some head movement, and some uh, leg movement in this round. He, he continually, Pearson squares up to him. He, he will take his right foot, which is in the back, drag it forward so that he's almost square with the borrow, and then throw the right hand from a closer position. Well, he continues to outquick the borrow. with Pearson's quickness. Coming to the end of round number four.
right hand. And also watch the hip movement right there of Pearson as he, when he squares up to throw the right hand. There it is. See how he pivots and gets his whole body into that punch as he throws. He swings that right hip around. That is how sharp and how focused Lamont Pearson is. You know, these fighters increase their focus on that little light bag that they hit, that little bag hanging from the ceiling, and he has spent hours diligently working on that bag Lamont Pearson has. This is round number five. I thought Navarro had an excellent first minute in the last round, but then he, then he just stopped moving, and he, he went right back to where he was in the previous round, standing in front of Pearson. And look like, looking like he's underwater. He, he, he got slow. He got lethargic in there as the round progressed. He comes out this round kind of with an increased focus, the sharpness. But the question that I would pose is, is it that Navarro is slow or is it that Pearson is quick? Well, Pearson's quick, and Pearson has hurt him on several occasions with those quick, sharp punches. When you get hit and you get hurt, it just takes the steam out of you. It takes the quickness out of you. All of a sudden, you feel like you're underwater. Your, your, your bell's ringing. You, are, uh, you feel like you're swimming underwater. Your punches are slow. Everything's moving in slow motion. The light, and that's what was happening to the Navarro. Wow, again, great right hand. Pearson can crack. Only eight KOs in his 15 rand wins, but he has good power. This is just not like Carlos Navarro that I've seen in the past. A lot of combinations from him. Great body work. You're not seeing that tonight. Pearson's loading up now. Especially with those body shots. to figure out how to make a change. And I think that would be indicative of a fighter that is hurt. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I think he's been hurt on several occasions with crisp punches. He's been hurt. That just takes, it just takes everything out of you. It takes your steam. It takes your wind. It takes your speed. And I think that's what has happened to Navarro. And once you get hurt early in a fight, it's easier to get hurt later as the fight continues. Uh, Pearson just hot shot him. Boy, Pearson really If the sport is hit and don't be hit, then Pearson is getting it all done. We welcome you back to the Grand Victoria Casino. We're in Elgin, Illinois, up the road from Chicago. Barry Tompkins, Rich Murata, the champ, Sean O'Grady, telling you all about our main event. This is a battle for the USBA Junior Lightweight Championship. More importantly, a battle for number one in the IBF. And a chance to fight one of the real marquee fighters, David uh, Pearson, rather, Lamont Pearson, and Carlos Navarro. Uh, with Navarro, I'm sure you would have had to say, coming into this fight is the favorite. And Pearson just handed it to him so far. Well, I've got him winning the last four rounds. And I just, I think that Navarro needs to be busier. There, and he starts off this round a little in that way. A little busy. But hitting Pearson on the gloves. Let's go into the corner of Lamont Pearson. And uh, Sean O'Grady is there. And Sean, i got to imagine uh, Pearson's folks have to be pretty happy with what they're seeing so far. Very happy. This looks like a winning corner over here. Andre Hunter is the chief trainer. Andre, what did you do to Lamont Pearson? He looks fantastic. Well, Lamont really is, is a uh, very good athlete. He's just blessed by God. You know, I, I do what I do, and uh, I can't take the credit for that. because he's just What are you trying to get him to do tonight? What I'm trying to do is get him just keep hitting his butt with jab. When he's walking back on his heels, take a hard step behind him with a quick jab in the right hand. It, You're trying to get him to do something else once he gets Carlos to the ropes. What do you want him to do? That's when I want him to throw that right hand. Only when he gets back high on his heels, stand up straight. He can't some... get away from it. And then when he's in the middle of the ring, bending down, I want him to bring it on and bring the hook back upside. Yeah, I, I see those uppercuts. You want the uppercuts when, when Carlos is bending over, right? right? But, but while he's in tight in, inside fighting, I need him to keep circling. I have to hit this guy to keep pulling to his left. Carlos likes to throw a big left hand. Andre, any concern about the judges' scorecards at this point? I think you're way ahead. Uh, I think we're ahead, too, but I just want him to keep his focus. Uh, he 
Don't shop. Don't, 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 yeah, don't get laxed in there. Keep doing what he's doing. It was fine. You can't let down because you know how Carlos Navarro can punch. Still in a fight. Back over to you guys. Well, well he is doing what he's doing, Rich. I, I, I think he started out right where he left off in this round, and he's completely controlling the fight, and he's got Navarro going back. Navarro, a little bit better work this round with the jab. But still, you know, Pierce is just heavier handed than he is. Back in November of 99, was supposed to fight Mr. Garza for the WBA title at 122 pounds. Ten days before the fight, Garza pulled out with an injury. Big letdown at that point for Carlos Navarro. He has not had a title shot since. And he, he, tonight is a night where he could get himself in a position to claim a title shot. Number one uh, ranking if he can win this fight. But haven't seen a lot of that kind of hunger out of him so far. Uppercut slipped through there. We talked about Pearson being heavy handed. There's another good right hand. He seems to be getting the ball's attention even when he hits him on the gloves. <laughs> Rich, you talked about Pearson's being heavy handed. Listen to this uppercut. You can hear them. They land with a thud. Now, again, the start of the round is when Navarro does his best work. In each of the last two rounds, I thought he's had an effective first minute. But at the end, I haven't felt that it was enough for him to carry the round because he stops after about a minute. Now, Navarro's starting well here in the round, the, in the round again at the beginning, doing most of the work, making Pearson miss and landing some combinations. Those punches are caught on the arms, gloves. Navarro's got to put out a better jab than he is. Instead of just, he's using his jab to kind of set things up, but he needs to keep Pearson off him. And a more stinging jab would do that. So he's just kind of throwing it out there. Break, break. Pearson just took a step back to a deep breath. seconds to go in the fight. Navarro having a better round here so far, but now he's got to stop. He can't just stop fighting. And once again, he wins the first minute of the round. He's fighting well in this round, Navarro is. Kind of ready to uh, chat with Joao Casamayor, get his read on this fight thus far, as soon as this round is over. <laughs> still coming forward but has not thrown as many punches not near as many punches in this round as he has in the previous round He's got a lot more posing in this round that's true I think Carlos is boxing quite intelligently in this round and keeping uh, Pearson at bay Carlos Pearson shaking his right hand Do something. Good one, yeah. Boy, he looked like he was hurting with those hands, though. Well, your, your point is very well taken. Pearson not doing much in this round. He's kind of allowing the ball to take the round. More a case, I think, of uh, what Pearson did do and what Navarro did. Let's go to Sean O'Grady with Joao Casamayor. Sean? Thanks, guys. The WBA junior lightweight champion is Joel Casamayor. Louis Acuba is going to help me interpret. Louis, ask him what he thinks about this fight. It's pretty one-sided. ¿Qué tú crees de esta pelea, Casamayor? ¿Qué tú crees de la pelea esta que está pasando aquí? Bueno, yo, para mí, es una buena pelea para, 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 para aquí, para el casino. Y yo veo una, una pelea más que de, de ver mi, 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 mi edición. Venía a ver la pelea y para mí una experiencia y coger que, que, que algún día uno de ellos pueda ser mi, 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 mi comentario. Now, without a doubt, 
doubt. You know, it was a great fight. Pearson, it seems like he's definitely winning the fight. But he's here. He's happy he's here because he's scouting these guys. Maybe he's a possible opponent someday. Yeah, you're looking forward in your career. You might you might face him. Are you at all daunted by, by sitting here watching him? Does this scare you at all? Esto te mete miedo cuando estás viendo aquí la pelea. No. No. I think we all understand that. Yeah, I don't think he's scared at all. Back over to you guys. That was a good answer. <laughs> And, 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 and that was an answer that Louis de Cubas absolutely translated perfectly. Yes. <laughs> he didn't mean it. There, no translation was needed on that one. Casamayor, I think Casamayor, since he hooked up with Joe Goose and really caught his stride, and Joe has done a great job uh, as, his, uh, as his trainer leading him to the top. Very popular guy in the uh, Cuban community, too, in Miami. As a matter of fact, I was, here I am name dropping, but I was talking to Levon Hernandez from That's Not a Knockdown the San Francisco Giants, and uh, he was singing the praises of Casamayor. Not only Casamayor the fighter, but Casamayor the guy. Let's see if Pearson comes out here in this round with a little more intensity than he showed in that last round. Navarro did a good job of, of changing the well, the tempo of the fight, I thought, a little bit in that last round. He did a nice job of boxing. I got the sense, Sean O'Grady, that uh, Casamayor is uh, not worried. <laughs> what would make you think that? He, you know what? He's he's not. He's really. I, th I think he's the glamour of this division. I think he is the man really to beat. He's so focused. Casamayor is is really great. As he's looking at this fight, cer certainly picking out different things. So Lamont Pearson would be a different fighter against him, or even Carlos Navarro. We can't certainly can't count him out of this match. He's still got three and a half more rounds to work with. You would say even more than. Floyd Mayweather, the glamour of the division. No, well, yeah, you're right. Floyd too. And, uh, he's right there with Floyd. You think so? Yeah. So. Casamayor, yes. But he and Floyd are the match. Although uh, the first up will be uh, Freitas, as long as he can make the weight. Uh, that'll be interesting because Freitas has got that big giant punch. And Casamayor is an expert boxer. That's a great uh, style contrast. If they, if they beat. How, many, how much do these fights, you know, he's fighting, Floyd's a, a terrific fighter, but fighting back-to-back -to -back tough, tough fights. Is that where on a fighter? That's the charm of this division, though, is yeah, that there are right. so many good yeah. fights out there. And there's so many great fighters in this division, too. Not only good Steve fights, Ford. just good matchups, guys sure. with different styles. And guys who really love the sport, who follow the sport, they love the game, they improve themselves. I mean, Floyd Mayweather has been in the game, born in the game. Jim with his father, Floyd Senior, four years of Oh, look at that right hand. Lamont Pearson is just putting it all together tonight. But but I'll tell you what, Rich, the, here again, it's an observation. I'll throw this out there for you. It looks to me like Pearson's getting a little tired. It's possible there. Up until that last little salvo, he hadn't shown much for a round and a half. Oh, well, and there it is. Like a liar out of me. I think he heard you. Yeah. When you say that from now on, Mr. Just didn't look like he had it all together. Was breathing through his mouth and just found something. You know how you got that? That bag on jab. You got me? He's right feeling face. great he over there in the corner. Look, when he hit, hit, hit. Pop, 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 pop. Don't, don't get too close when you get, to, to get him inside because we don't want to smoke the power and take the leverage away, all right? We want to keep the power. But, baby, he's waiting too long when he's about to look. Right, was it or was it not a knockdown? Pearson really opening up. There's the right hand. It drives him back into the ropes. There's the body shot. Pearson coming forward. There's the left hook to the body. There's the knee touching the ground. But what the referee, Podgorski, says was he kind of pushed him to the ground a little. And Navarro clearly troubled there in the corner. They're trying to wake him up over there. Frank Rivera grabbed hold of the neck and was just shaking him. Boy, I'll tell you, and it's hard, too. When you have a fighter that is just not his night, how do you get him into the fight is beyond me. I've seen it so many times. One night, one punch, one fighter, and they, 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 they age immediately. They don't de decline slowly. Fighters age one punch. Carlos has something on his mind. Something is 
bothering him. And Pearson really does seem revitalized. Pearson focused, Navarro not. And that right hand of Pearson that really turned things in the eighth round came right after a pretty good little rally by Navarro. That's, I like that from the corner. They should do it. It's not his night. He's in there taking a beating. Why do you let him continue that? Lamont Pearson gets a major, this is a major win for Pearson. Navarro only one time was defeated in the past. Out of 24 fights. And all your boys. Vera. What? Adulation over in the corner of Pearson, but Rivera just said that's enough. My fighter's been hit enough. He's taken enough punishment. Let's stop this fight. Not his night. It was his night. Lamont Pearson. What an awakening for him. You know, his career kind of floated along. 15-0-1 with 18 KOs. Nobody really knew him. You know what? They're going to be knowing him now. There's the right hand. Cracked it right on the chin. In came the towel and Navarro going down at the same time. So Frank Rivera knew it was about to happen. It's a beautiful right hand. Look at that one. He just whipped that over. And a delayed reaction, basically, to the knockdown. You know, when, you, when you're sharp like that, it's like you can't miss a good punch. You can't miss your opponent with your fist, even if you try. Seems like every punch you throw, your opponent runs into it. And that's the way he was. Lamont Pearson was so sharp in this fight tonight. He is the USBA champion. And he, he earned it, I'll tell you that. You know, they've done it the right way with uh, Pearson, though. They've been stepping him up little by little. Last fight, Harold Warren. Now this fight, Carlos Navarro, he keeps heading up. Big things coming for him. Welcome back. Which I really like a guy who comes in here with an idea of how to win the fight, how to beat a guy that maybe you're not supposed to beat, and then execute that plan perfectly. I thought that's exactly what Lamont Pearson did tonight. Yeah, he did it. And you know something? Carlos Navarro tried to adjust and did adjust just successfully for a moment. But then, once again, Pearson was able to figure him out, figure what he was doing, slow him down once again, and eventually finish him off. All right, let's uh, make it official here as we go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Jimmy? Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time of one minute, four seconds in round number nine. Our referee in charge, Pete Podgorski, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout, the new USBA junior lightweight champion, and now the IBF number one world contender, Lamont Pearson. He gets the number one ranking. Now, it's interesting. He was not ranked in the IBF rankings at all coming into this fight. Now you say, how did he get to be number one? Well, I'm not quite sure. Actually, I am quite sure how all of that happens. But the bottom line is he does seem to be a guy that is worthy of being the number one ranked fighter. Well, he's certainly worthy of a, of a, of a ranking. I mean, he was, I think, ranked the number nine in the WBA just recently. So he, he had a, attained that. And he had attained a minor title. And now he's attained a little bit better title and a little little bit, a lot better uh, ranking. There he's got the IBF champion Stevie Forbes just to his right. And if Forbes gets by John Brown, we couldn't see these two not too far down the road together. Which would be an interesting fight. Gerald Casamayor was also up in the center of the ring congratulating him a moment ago as well. Let's go to Sean O'Grady who's with the winner. Sean? Lamont Pearson, wow! You are you are certainly excited about this championship, but where did you come from? Where did I come from? I come from Keystone. Yep. You know, but I've, I've seen your career. You're kind of floating along. All of a sudden, you put it all together. What happened? I'm floating along from day one. They I was tested. From day one, I was tested with Abdullah, the Ghana Golden uh, Gold Medalist, Daryl Pigney, all the veterans. Every fight, like I said, brought me to this position. You know, you've been working in the gym diligently on, on everything, and your skills all paid off tonight. In fact, I want you to take a look at this right hand that you landed. Because which time? You, which you, time? Yeah, which time is right? You landed him at will. What were you thinking here right toward the end of this fight? Right towards the end. I had no idea his corner was going to stop it. He looked hurt every time I hit him. It was just a matter I keep up, keep up. Uh, I think the seventh round he took control with the jab, so I had to take control back in the eighth. Uh, you had.
had to fight back. What were you thinking when he took control? When he took control, I was like, okay, I knew he had a lot of experience. I knew that coming from the amateurs. So I had to dig deep and take control back with my jab and my reach. And, and you I knew a lot of time before I tap him. He did, it was a tough fight. He took a lot of hard shots. And you said, wait a minute, I'm the boss in this I'm fight. I'm the boss. I'm the boss. I didn't want to, I wanted to box him, but I didn't want to give him the aggressive too much, to, you know, to give him any confidence. USBA champion. How did that make you feel? I see you're hugging oh. your trainers right there. What I mean, were you? From the 98 Golden Gloves to my fights here, my fight with Earl Warren, this fight, I mean, every fight I'm learning and I'm testing and I love it. And Lamont, you me feel great. I want to thank Keystone, American Resist, for giving me this opportunity, and I'll be back. Big opportunity, right, but one. you know something? You, you've been brought along systematically. You fought Harold Warren in your life. You've been schooling. Now, now you, you get this victory, the USBA Championship, Carlos Navarro. You look ahead at Steve Forbes, which could be, very likely could be your next opponent. What do you have to learn, and what do you have to change between now and that fight? Well, that fight is over with. Now, whoever they ask me to go against next, I'll go back and and I do my work. This fight, Are you the number one contender? That's what they announced uh, before this fight, so I guess I am. Okay. Number one contender, but I'm going to take whatever. I've been taking whatever they've been giving me. Like I said, I got some good spar with Mark Two Shop Johnson, DeMarcus Chop Chop Corley. I want to thank Dale Matchett. And whoever they put in front of me next time, whether it's my man right here, Steve Ford, I'm looking forward to that test. All right, tell me something. Are you excited? I'm so excited, I can't even put it in words. I'm happy to be here with my man Jimmy Lennon. And you guys, hey. I've been watching you guys for years. We're, we're, and we're, and, we're, and I, I want to <laughs> give my shout out for the Champs this is Steve Forbes, Cosmere Hall. I'm looking to step up. I want my picture up on, on, on when y'all show me y'all look at the junior lightweights. Hey, hey, come on, are you trying to are you trying to take my job here? Steve Forbes is right here. Steve, I, I want to get you in here for a moment. Steve, Steve, got some Steve. fat cheeks there, baby. Oh, fat cheeks. Hey, 150 now. Not, 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 out, not, out of, not out of training, are you? No. Steve Forbes, what is your assessment of the performance of the performance tonight? Excellent performance by Lamont Pearson. He just added spark to the junior lightweight division, and that's what it needs. This is the best division in boxing. Yeah, it is the best division in boxing. Did he divulge any secrets in his performance tonight? Well, if, if he did, I wouldn't say. But, no, he, he looked good. This is his night. It's time to shine. And when he fights for the title, then, you know, we'll get it on. But this is his night, and I don't want to hurt his yeah. night. Well, you don't want to you don't want to divulge any secrets right here in front of you. But no. Right here in front of me. But I'll, jump, no, I'll get between you guys. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so, so in training for this man, how are you going to change your style? What are you going to adapt? Or, I know you've got to get past John Brown first, but how are you going to, how are you going to fight Lamont? We cannot sit in front of Lamont. He's a good puncher, good skilled boxer. I, I see it as it'll be a good chess match because I'm a good boxer. He's a good boxer. And you get two good fighters come together. Yeah. This is what makes boxing exciting. Two good fighters. What about his fight with Navarro? Would it be a different kind of fight with you? Yeah, because yeah. Navarro's a southpaw yeah. and I'm not uh, yeah. de uh, very different. But yeah. he, he looked good tonight. He did. He looked very good. All right, Steve Forbes. I think we've got Carlos Navarro in here, too. Let me uh, wind my way over there. Carlos, Carlos. First of all, Carlos, a lot of fans out there. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm real good. I'm, uh, I'm fine. I just uh, I caught some real good shots. The guy's yeah. real strong. But first of all, before anything, I want to thank America Presents for uh, making this possible. I came in here. I gave it my all. Carlos, but, uh, what happened tonight? It, you know what? I was real off. My legs were they were gone. I don't know what happened. I, I, I felt good coming into the fight. Just all of a sudden, I don't know. I couldn't. I couldn't let go. I mean, everybody knows how I fight out there. I, I've seen. I've seen you before. Rich Murata's seen you before. Barry Tompkins has seen. We've all seen you fight. And it's not been this kind of fight. Even from the first round on, you weren't in this fight. Is something on your mind that, that shouldn't be, or is there what, what, what's going on with Carlos Navarro? Uh, you know what? It's not. I started off this whole fight real good, but then as soon as the bell rang, I, I was off. I couldn't move. I couldn't keep my hands up. E I couldn't even let there, go. Yeah, even there. I mean, in this this round in the fight, it looked like you. This doesn't look like Carlos Navarro to me. What's next for you? What do you do now? Uh, well, as of now, I'm thinking. Uh, you know what? I don't want to uh, get hurt. 
I don't know if I should uh, announce my retirement, but uh, you know what, for right now, I want to get my head off the game and, uh, you know, do something for my family. I have family and a wife, and, uh, you know, I got to go and take care of them some other way. I think the best idea for you right now, uh, get as far away from boxing as you can, try to figure out what it is that you want to do, and then go ahead and do it. Carlos Navarro, he uh, put up a good fight, but uh, he didn't, didn't come out ahead. In fact, off from the first round on. Back over to you guys. Yeah, finishing second. Uh, doesn't quite get it in this sport. No, and it sounds like Carlos uh, may be leaving the ring. And, uh, you know, there's a, a, a guy who had so many high expectations and so many people had high expectations for him as a professional. Expectations he has not reached as a professional. And uh, it's going to be a disappointing conclusion if it, in fact, is the conclusion of his career. Meantime, let's give it to this man, Lamont Pearson. He's the guy that's number one, and he's the guy that those four...